I, I'll never forget the moment I was, I got on my phone and I saw what happened and it, it hit me. It hit me like a bag of bricks. I talked to a lot of these Holocaust survivors and the first thing they said to me when I would start asking questions is, America was the same today, like how we were before the, before the war, as Germany was before Nazi Germany. Pulled my gun out, shot the guy in the chest. And then that moment where I was on the floor and the dude had an AR-15 in the back of my head, I said, you know what? Today's the day I'm gonna start keeping Shabbat. Hey guys, we got an amazing podcast coming up for you. But first, I just wanted to say thank you to this week's sponsor, our friends over at Elite Israel Realty. They do an amazing job finding new Olim, apartments and houses to buy here in Beit Shemesh. So if you're moving to Eretz Yisrael, they're the people you want to call. You can trust them. And we're going to hear a little bit from them a little later on in today's episode. I also want to say thank you to my personal friend, Svi Garber, over at Achtus Magazine. They're big supporters of us over here at Homebound. Achtus Magazine is the official Jewish community magazine of Tom's River. I'm personally from Tom's River, an amazing community there. If you're in or around Tom's River, check them out at achtusnews.com. And lastly, I want to give a huge thank you to Tamar. She runs our social media here at Homebound. She is fantastic at what she does. If anyone's looking for somebody to run their social media for their company or needs any writing done for them, script writing, uh, that's what she does. She's amazing. Check out her website over at talesof.com. And now let's get back to today's episode. Welcome to today's episode of the Homebound Territory Israel podcast, where we talk about Eretz Israel. Um, today we are joined by a very special Yid, Ephraim U- Uvaidov. 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 Almost. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, just briefly, how Ephraim and I met is Ephraim moved to Eretz Israel not very long, half a year ago? So almost six months. Almost six months. And, uh, and Ephraim, um, I got a text from Ephraim ask, telling me, uh, made a random decision to move to Eretz Yisrael, very spontaneous. I'm opening up a barber shop, and I might need a video. I, make, I do video work. That's, that's basically what happened. And I invited him to, to have a conversation with me today because it just, he just sounded like a cool guy. So anyway, I want to hear, we're all going to hear from Ephraim, what his story is. So Ephraim, tell us, uh, it, it sounded like you moved here in quite a hurry. And it sounded very intense, which sounds co- cool. So tell us about uh, who you are, where you grew up, and what made you decide to move to Eretz Yisrael. I'm Ephraim, Ephraim Avaidov, from uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Grew up in Phoenix, great place, not many ids. So back home, I was an arms manufacturer. I made guns, all kinds of cool stuff, for machine guns. I cut hair, I had a couple barber shops. Yeah, you know, average American stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Make guns and cut hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The average American. Yeah. And we're, we're in, by the way, we, we are in Ephraim's Barbershop right now. Really yeah. cool place. I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but this place is really, really cool. <laughs> you, should, you guys should check this out. The location of this place is right yeah. next to New Delhi in Mirkaz in Ramapi Chemish Olive. Yes. You got it. Okay. Arizona's a great place. Awesome place to live. America's a great place to live, right? Many years I lived there is great. I'm about Chuba, I'm new to the Yid life. So it's probably been five, six years now that um, I've picked, you know, a different life. Let's just talk about that for two minutes. What, 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 what made you become religious? Ah, oh, it's gonna go on. A, that's a forty-minute conversation. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, long story short, my sister became a, a, a about Chuba with her husband, which they're gonna be later in the story. And they inspired, they, they were working on me and I got into a situation where I got in a con, I got jumped at a lake. They were, they were trying to hurt the person I was with. They're trying to pull us out of our vehicles. And the long story short, I pulled my gun out for self-defense. I pulled the trigger in the guy's chest. He had like face tattoos. I don't have a record. I'm arms man like you have to have a series background clearance to be an arms manufacturer so i have a crystal clear record right and these people did not there was like 30 40 of them they would have killed me they would have killed the person i was with you were 30 or 40 people attacking you in a car there was a lot there was like a huge family of criminals wow they threw rocks at our car beer bottles it was a big thing 
pulled my gun out, I shot the guy in the chest. What I thought that shot him. The gun didn't go off. It was a Glock 34, it was a nice piece. When I put it into the guy's chest, the gun barrel went, it, it set back a little bit and that jammed the gun. It doesn't oh, let the gun fire. So today it's Hashem that saved the guy and me from trouble, right? At the time, I was just trying to save myself and the person I was with, which is today is my wife, <laughs> right? So that's how that happened. Uh, we were we got arrested for the situation because they were the my my phone was not connecting. I could not reach out to the police. I was trying. They reached first. Now I'm the criminal. Oh, I got arrested. Yeah. I had like ten charges. It was a big deal. Yeah. And then that moment where. I was on the floor, and the dude had an AR-15 in the back of my head. I said, you know what? Today is the day I'm going to start keeping Shabbat. This is it. You know, I know you've been, I know you've been knocking, and this is the day. So from then on, I actually, two, three days later... So I, just, I thought you'd give us a really cool Balchuva story. That just sounds like the run-of-the-mill Jewish Balchuva story. This one? Yeah. <laughs> Who shot? Nobody's ever shot anybody. I'm getting around right. Did you shoot anybody? No. <laughs> Whatever, long story short, started keeping Shabbos. Uh, met a really incredible rabbi, Rabbi Aaron Reuven. He's great. He inspired myself to grow, um, my wife. And uh, that's that. That's the Balchuva story. So. All right. So that's, that sounds awesome. Deep, I go really deep. That's another that's a podcast of its own. You shot someone. Someone almost shot you. You almost shot someone. You became Balchuva. You started yeah. serving Hashem you and go. keeping Shabbos. You, you got all of it except the point. That's great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now let, let's hear. Okay. What, tell us a little more about your life and lead us into Eretz Yisrael. What happened? What's going on? Oh, all right. That's a good one. No intention of moving to Israel, by the way. Yeah. Ever. No intention. I came here when I was 17 years old before... I mean, I did not know what Judaism was. My parents are very spiritual people, they were, but not not religious, right? Came there to Israel. I thought this place was a dump, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't like it. I was a car guy, I was into all kinds of cool stuff, and Israel did not have that. I had a V eight. Israel's Israel had four cylinders. Like, that's not cool. You know what I mean? I was seventeen. <laughs> Long story short, I got home and I kissed I literally kissed the ground of America when I got home at seventeen. Not gonna believe it. I kissed the floor. My mom watched me do it. Fast forward uh, 11, 12 years. I'm, you know, this is six, no, this is now seven and a half months ago. I'm sitting at the table and I told my wife, hey, we're going to Israel. Right? My sister lives here. She made Aliyah seven years ago. She lives here in Ramat Bashemish Olive. Nice. I was talking to her. I missed them. I was like, hey, we need to go. I just wanna go see him. I booked the tickets. When did I book? Four weeks out. My wife is going crazy. This is for vacation. I want to go to vacation. I don't plan things because whenever you plan, it never works. I never plan. I just do it. Boom. Bought the tickets. Hey, we're going. My wife is shopping on Amazon, Costco, Walmart, Target, all great stores. If you're still in Kutzlar, it's enjoy it. Okay. So now, after all of that, we're here. We get on a plane. I have no intention of moving anywhere ever. I love Arizona. It's the best place I've ever been. Like, I hate other cities. I don't can't stand California, whatever. I hate New York. Arizona's awesome. Get on the plane, and now I'm seeing the mountains in the little, right, in the little window. And I'm thinking to myself, this, this, is, this is holy land. This is the mountains that our forefathers walked through. These are the mountains that the, the Yids walked through. When Moshe Rabbeinu was leading them through, it was here. This is where it happened. I can't connect like that anywhere, ever. Yeah. And this is the place. I think that's something that, that, that a lot of Jews I, I, I talk to about Eretz Yisrael say. It's like that's like the first experience they have. They see Eretz Yisrael and the first thing, like you don't even, you're so overwhelmed. The first thing you just think about is like, this is where Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov, David and Melch, this is where they live. This was their homes. Yeah. Got off the plane. And all of a sudden, I realized, like, nobody's saying, everybody's really, I also noticed that the first time, like, it's different here. It's not America. America is, everybody's, like, cheesy. They're smiling. Hi, hello, how are you? Whatever. It is what it is. But they hate you. 
but they're saying these things. Hi, my name fake. is politically correct. No, I'm not politically correct. <laughs> but I came here and I realized this is where I belong. I'm not politically correct. Like, you could tell somebody like, hey, you know what I mean? <laughs> we th- I realized you just say things here and it's fine. You drive and it's fine. Ah, long story short, I get in, my, my brother-in-law picks me up. Puts the kids in the car. We're driving, and again, it hits me like we're we're driving, and I'm seeing this beautiful like. I'm not focused on the roads. I'm not focused on the city. I'm not focused on the car. I'm focused on the land. And at that moment, I I knew it was this is this is special. So I was like, this is this is very very special. And for two weeks, I was on a different level of. I was in a different world for. No, less than two weeks before the last two days were horrible. I didn't want to leave. So the first the first twelve days was just I was on a cloud nine. Like this is amazing. I'm I'm everybody it hit me. I'm we were driving and I looked over and the dude had Fayot hanging from his right. And then I looked again and that guy's Jewish. This guy's I didn't realize this the first time I was here. That this is a Jewish state. Yeah. Did all our Everybody is our people. The the garbage guy most likely is our people. Sometimes yeah. he's not, but he's only the other kind of people. But mostly he's our people. Everybody's our people. The police officers are our people. The truck drivers got long pays with na na and yes, and it hit me. This is where I belong. But I have such a deep connection to America. Like my businesses, my home, the family, the shul, all this great stuff. Right? What are we gonna do? <laughs> We're gonna wing it. So it's a great trip. We I went. I literally went to, if you can name a Kever, I went there. You name it, I've been there in those two weeks. Kever to Kever, Kever to Kever. And every every prayer my wife and I had unexpectedly was Hashem just point us in the right direction in life. I had no intention of moving to Eretz Yisrael at this time. Just point us in the right direction. You guide us and we'll follow. You lead the road, we'll follow. Right? That happens. Now I have to... We're getting to the last days, and I just get sad. Like, I'm sad. I'm depressed. I don't want to leave. I don't want to go home. I told my wife, hey, honey, go home, sell the businesses, sell the house, come back, and I'll be here. She thought it was a joke, of course, but she thought it was really funny. She had no intention of moving either. At this point, I would like to now. I'm like, I want to live here. And I'm already thinking, okay, so I'm filling up gas. And in my head, I'm already thinking, I'm on vacation. Oh, so this is how I'm going to fill up gas when I move here. Wow. Right? I'm going to use Google Translate for everything. Like, th- this is what I'm going to do. And then I started thinking, what am I going to do for Parnassa? Like, yeah, I'm a really good, I'm a pretty good barber. I manufacture really cool guns. But the guns aren't a really big thing here, right? The haircuts aren't really, like, profitable business here. So now I'm starting to think of the like the logistics. But I get back to Arizona where we go right into the hogs. So this was September of 2023. Now we're going into all the hogs, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, Sukkot. And every single prayer I had is take me to the land. A lot of introspection, yeah. Take me to the land, Hashem, please. I would cry during my prayers. I don't know why. I just wanted to be here. Please, just take me. I want to go. And I was miserable. I stopped working. And I'm a guy. I was working six days a week. Like, that was it. Work, 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 work. Kids, work, work. Wife, kids, work. Everything is do, 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 do. And I can't stop. Now, I'm, I don't want to work. I stopped working. And I just fantasize about Eretz Israel. And then comes the holiday. Shmini Right? I'm walking to shul. All my neighbors are like, hey, I'm so sorry for what happened. And I was like, what? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. They don't know I'm Jewish. I'm so sorry. And I was like, what are you sorry about? Everything's great. They're like, no, you don't, you don't watch the news? And I was like, no, we're like, we can't right now. Right? And then the thing goes, Israel is in war. And it hit me like, I don't know how bad the war is, right? Like they're in war, but what kind of war? How it comes out, we realize what happened. I, I'll never forget the moment I was, I got on my phone and I saw what happened and it, it hit me. It hit me like a bag of bricks. It, 
it, it hit me hard and I'm, I was really connected to like a lot of older Jewish people being in the business world like t- cutting hair and I talked to a lot of these Holocaust survivors and the first thing they said to me when I would start asking questions is when I just started cutting hair because now they're, they're a lot real older about a lot most of them died the questions were or my questions were how was it how did it start where and they said America was the same today like how we were before the before the war as Germany was before Nazi Germany right and it stuck with me it really did it always stuck with me I had 10,000 rounds of ammo um I had thou- I had hundreds of guns and when the war started I I, I went and I started spreading guns to all the, the shul members I, I did a lot of training back in my day to to like in battle to fight I trained with a lot of like special forces Navy SEALs you know if I'll, it, I'll, if it I'll, came down to it I could do it <laughs> so I started training the shul and then run it back a little bit the war started right this is this is this is real the first couple weeks I went to work everybody was really supportive hey we stand with Israel we're with you we love you we're, we're here for you we're praying for you right this this we're here we love you we love Israel and then comes like three weeks later and they're like you guys are doing a genocide you know <laughs> you guys blew up a hospital you know and now I have to defend myself and then I got to the point where I started keeping a machine gun in my backpack and a Glock under my seat it's amazing how every Jew is a spokesperson for the whole Jewish nation no that's, that's how it is yeah, I can defend my nation yeah Right? I have to defend the place I just came from. We don't want war. Yeah. We never wanted war. That's why we ended up in concentration camps. Because yeah. we're friendly people. Yeah, and we're like, they'll never do this to us. No. And today, I speak to people in Hutzlaritz. No. You know, anti-Semitism isn't even around anymore. It's gone again. Yeah. Come on. Right. I felt it. And now, I prayed so hard for Eretz Yisrael. I prayed, I cried, I davened. My wife comes up to me and she goes, hey, let's go. I was like, whoa, hold up. No, 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 no. You're, you're, now you're crazy. Because now it's real. Right. Now that the wife agreed, what do I have holding me back? Right. You're like, well, let, let's move. But like in the back of your head, you're like, but she'll never move. Like in so, five years, right? Yeah. Ten years. Everybody says that. So it's all we'll, in good we'll, we'll end up there. We'll end up. Every Jew says mm-hmm. we're going to end up in Israel. Israel. But when we'll the be- wife comes over to you and says, I'm ready, you're like. Your wife comes up to you and she says, we're ready to go. And I said, no, we're not. We have businesses. We can't leave. We have a home. We have to sell. This needs to happen. She goes, no. It's just, she goes, okay, so sell the businesses. And I said, <laughs> I love how easy this is for you. Yeah. Like, what is it just going to sell overnight? You know what I mean? Come on. Well, women's prayers are are heard uh, so more powerful. than ours. Yeah. Right? We got to go to school and connect and do, you know what I mean? Women don't because in 24 hours, I called one of my buddies. I was like, because my, my home was next to the shul. I called my buddy. I was like, hey, as a joke, you want to buy my house? And he goes, yeah, I'll buy it. I was like, whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> He's like, I'll buy it. I was like, all right, cool. Oh, by the way, I know that his his uh, his daughter just got married to an awesome dude who's also a barber. And I really like, I have a, like a lot of love for this kid. We would learn with him in the in the shul. And I was like, hey, I think this the one of my, my one of my businesses would be really good for him. One of the barber shops, the one I just opened. I just opened a barbershop a year ago. Like it was wow. in an amazing spot. Something it was a miracle I opened that one. Like nobody in their right mind would ever sell that place. That place was a gold mine. Like why it does none of it make sense, by the way. This is all like none of it makes sense. So I call him, I'm like, hey, I have this business. I think it would be really good for him. He should buy it. And he goes, I'll take it. Same dude, which I'm gonna send him the podcast and he's gonna laugh, right? <laughs> the same guy bought my house and my business funded everything in less than 24 hours and now we have something to buy a home in israel with right now it's real (laughs) but 
at the same time, we're emptying out the house and everything. We're not really like, well, no, we're not really doing this. Like at the end, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. We're not. Yard sales, yard sales, giving stuff away. My wife, you're not going to believe this. A woman is connected to things. She's connected to the baby crib that all three kids were born in, raised in. <laughs> She's connected to the teddy bears. She's connected to the blankets, to the pillows. Oh, he sat, my, he, when he was a baby, he sat here. Da, 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 da. You're not going to believe it. She went. Hashem put something. You can't get rid of that string. <laughs> yeah, and Hashem put something. You're gonna. We had such assistance from Hashem, from Shemaim. She, he literally put a smoke screen in front of our heads, and I watched my wife throw things away and give things away and goodwill things away that I never in a million years thought she would. Today, actually, my mother-in-law has a one room of just our stuff that she doesn't let anybody touch. It's a museum. But this that when 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 it's time for you to leave and Hashem gives you the assistance, you have to take it. Yeah. You must. And if you don't take it at that particular time, if you sit there and plan Eretz Israel for five years, you're not gonna make it to Eretz Israel. Yeah. That's you have to do it. That's why so many Jews are still stuck in America. They're, they're so busy figuring out how am I you're gonna not, sell the business, yes. sell the sell the house community what about this what about that yeah you can what about till the rest of, you know till it forever and, and what you're saying is actually something i spoke about in, in the third po first pod podcast that we did um uh we, we were talking about this concept that when eric Yisrael calls you when eric Yisrael, like it's not just you don't just choose to go to israel eric Yisrael chooses you yeah. eric Yisrael is an entity on, on its own and uh when eric Yisrael, when hashem makes it that eric Yisrael, that, that it's time for you to come to eric Yisrael, everything just starts falling into place in the craziest ways and 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 at some point it hits you and you're like i don't have a choice i don't have a say in the matter i'm being just being it's like a magnet you know when it's everything, when the time comes just did, <laughs> everything we did was not us i would never personally i would never sell that business i would never sell that house i sold my i never sell these things why because i had a smoking interest rate on the house you're never gonna sell it you're stuck two and a half percent three percent come on that the business is producing. It's there. It's beautiful. Why would you sell this stuff? I said to myself, to other, I would never sell none of this. What do I do? I get rid of everything. Boom. All done. Nothing. I don't need anything. And, you know, the one thing that got, really helped us was we would learn. Uh, my wife and I said for uh, Kohelet. And the first line he says is, everything is nothing. Oh, Kohelet. Nice. And I heard my wife say, as she's throwing things away, Everything is nothing. Everything is nothing. This, it's going to be nothing one day. Might as well be now. And that, I saw, Akadosh Baruch Hu, I saw it. I saw the miracle. It was something I saw. I felt it. I felt the strength. Today, I don't have that same. I, today, I, I think about it, and I'm like, wow, like, how could I do that? What are yeah. they thinking? It's crazy. I wasn't thinking. It You're was right. a shit. Autopilot. Eric four Israel, weeks. autopilot. In four weeks, back to the story, we sold the house, sold the business. In four, I, I booked the ticket for four weeks out. In four weeks, we're in Eretz Israel. We got That's off the plane. How'd you make Aliyah in four weeks? Like paperwork and all that stuff. In it takes a few months. Oh, four weeks, I did background checks. You pulled it all checks. off. Yes. I did background checks. I did apostles. Wow. I did certificate. Everything in four weeks I did. That That's is crazy. Working. That's record. That's I wasn't record working. Break. I did everything in four weeks. Wow. I got here with a packet full of things. I took it to down, whatever we call it, downtown back home. I took the packet. I gave it to them. And they give you your to that zoot. And uh, maybe Nefesh Benefesh won't like what I'm saying now. But you don't need to go through them. You can do it your own way. You can see what you need from them. Or Google will help you. Because Nefesh Benefesh sits there and takes you apart. But if you go and you get all your paperwork in a bag. And you give it to the office here. They give you to that zoot and all that you need. Wow. I wish I knew that. That's it. Four I did it as fast years. as I humanly can. It took me six months. I, granted, I did it during COVID, but that's that's unbelievable. That's 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 a record timing right there. That's, that's unbelievable. It. Here you go. It's all text. Take it. I'm going to go back right back into it. Uh, you get off the plane. It's a great place to be. And now I'm thinking, okay. I, I, I called the realtor that was, I called the realtor that was uh, helping me with the rental of the house. We're talking now. He's a he's a good friend. He's a best friend now. This realtor, but we're, I was sitting there with my sister. We were talking, and I asked my sister, "What are the rates here for businesses? 
like commercial. She goes, a lot. You don't even think about it. Too much. Right? Call call the Rav. Call him. He's a rabbi as well. Rabbi Borokov, he's a realtor and a rabbi, right? I call him. He goes, hey, you know what's funny? I'm on my way to pick up a key for this spot next to New Delhi, which is like a walking distance from where you're living now. And I said, okay, take me there. This is on the fourth day of me being an Eretz Yisrael. <laughs> I was here for four days. Wow. I signed a lease on a business and I started building. And three, f- four weeks later, I got all the furniture in. I put all this together. I put the floors in. I cleaned it up. And a month and a half, two months later, I opened up. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Again, Hashem. I gave something up. I gave up my business, right? That I just opened. And Hashem, in that platter... I feel like it was a gift. And at any point during this like insanely fast, spontaneous Aliyah move, did you do you have a rabbi you discussed any of this with that was like saying, "Yeah, just follow your gut, go for it." Yeah, uh, my rabbi back home, Rabbi Pinchas, I called him. I said, "Hey," and this is again, I'm in the middle of moving already. I called him. I was like, "Hey, what do you think? I want to make Aliyah. It's getting crazy out here. This will be the next Nazi Germany. I can almost guarantee it. Why? Because everywhere the Yids you told have you told your rabbi this. Yeah, I said anywhere the Yids have ever been, they get spit out. Yeah, everything spit. Never. It's out. never if. It's always just when. Yes. When are we going to get spit out? Right. So he called his rav, and his rav said if he thinks this is the right decision, and this is let him do it. Rav says you're good to go, and that's when I booked the tickets. I was already selling things. I was in the middle of a yard sale when I called him, actually. <laughs> but that was the moment that uh, that was the put the stamp on it. And then things started happening. Once you make the decision to go to Eretz Israel, Hashem shows you why you need to leave. Yeah. We're driving down the road. Some dude starts throwing wrenches out, big wrenches out the window of his car. And I swerved out. It almost hit me. It would have hit the windshield. And God forbid, when I went through the windshield and hurt us. And at that moment, my wife is like, wow, I'm so happy we're leaving. Like, this is crazy <laughs> stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? And then there was a situation. We were at this place. We were at a, we were gra- we were at a place. And we had, a, had a, a very anti-Semitic attack that happened to me. It says, you guys are, you guys are killing people. Um, are you even Jewish? How do you know you're Jewish? The Jews don't belong in Israel. That's Palestinian land. It's Pal- look at Google. It's Palestinian. I said, are you are you on drugs? And we got it got really it got it got pretty heavy and uh, it got really close to an altercation. So that was another reason. My wife was like, you know what, we need to leave. And Hashem helps you. Pointers. We'll get right back to today's podcast with Ephraim. Uh, But before we hear a few words from today's sponsors, if you value the content we're creating, if you value the work we're doing, trying to bring Kal Yisrael back to Eretz Yisrael so we could bring the Mashiach, promoting Aliyah, inspiring Jews to return home, then please give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, share this video with your family and friends, check out our website, homeboundisrael.com and um, you could also check out our parent company Jerusalem Productions jerusalemfilm.com um, they they're, they're they're the ones creating these awesome videos uh, and creating this awesome content and they just do a full line of amazing video production so be sure to check them out jerusalemfilm.com and uh, now a few words from today's sponsor we're so happy to be part of the Homebound podcast, such an important podcast, talking about Aliyah. We at Elite Israel Realty are here to help you through the process. Donnie, what are we going to do to make it easy for them? With mine and Rob's experience that we've made Aliyah, we've bought homes of our own, and we've really learned how to keep the process as simple as possible, as close to the U.S. home purchasing process as possible. And that's what we do for you. We cater to the Anglo crowd from abroad, and we're here to welcome you and help you with uh, buying your home in Israel. So what's your uh, experience so far? You've been here for, uh, I mean, a pretty short period of time, but it sounds like you're moving really quick. So you're here for six months or so. Uh, you hit the ground running. You started a business. What, uh, how are things playing out in Eretz Yisrael? How are you enjoying Eretz Yisrael? How's your wife doing in Eretz Yisrael? Hey, you have kids? Three kids. 
Beautiful. And what? How? What's the ages? Uh, five, three, and one. Okay. You get off the plane. First week is good. You're on vacation. Second week, you're also on vacation. Third week, yeah. you want to go back home. I didn't want to okay. go back home. I did. You had in that third week. You you you're like I had enough of being cut off on lines. I had enough of being yelled at by cashiers for no reason. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's the HR. They telling you that. When Hashem, 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 like he like makes everything happen perfectly. You get here, and then like Hashem steps back. He says, tells the the Sultan, says, "Okay, you take over for the next month. Let's see if he's got what it takes." Right? <laughs> exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah. You, you hit it right on the money. Yes, yeah, so let's hear it. what 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 happened. Sultan took over. <laughs> <laughs> I get cut off in line. Of course, I get cut off on the road. Of course, it's Israel. People uh, look rude. People are not very friendly. Um, they're friendly. They're just not politically correct. They're not fake. Right. They're not fake. They're very nice, but they're not fake. They're right. not smiling. At right. You. That's right. It's not that they're not friendly. Like Russia, people are not friendly. Like they don't care if you die. But in Eretz Yisrael, it's not. It's not. It's not the case. People, like we're Eretz family here. They love. The we love each other. Yeah. You guys are all family. Like we come from Hutzel Arts. If somebody's doing something wrong on the road, I'm gonna like honk at them and ah, oh, get you know what I mean. But here, I realize, wait, like that's family. Yeah, we're all family here. But I did want to go back home. The, like, the third week, Hashem stepped back. He's like, you know what? Let's check this guy out. I said, I want to go home. I did. What was like the hardest things? Like two or three things that happened that like put where's you, the hardware put you over store? The time? Where's the hardware store? <laughs> I Google the plumbing store. There's no plumbing store on Google. I'm a barber, but I needed a haircut. Where do I get a haircut? What? I Google things, but Google isn't good here. It's not Israel. When you get off that plane, you ask people for help, which we don't do in America. We don't ask people for Yeah, help. everything is word of mouth. Everything. Google doesn't get you too far. So that was one. That was hard. Uh, there's no Target, Walmart, Home, Home Depot. Home Depot. <laughs> Home Depot. Brought this up. Home Depot. For men, it's the greatest struggle. <laughs> Home Depot is amazing. Yeah. I, I go to Home Depot all the time. Any, I don't, so I don't even need nothing. I go to Home Depot. Oh, air filter? Ha! <laughs> Home Depot. That's hard. I think if we can shut down Home Depot, we'll have mass aliyah. <laughs> All the Jews Costco. will just move. <laughs> yeah. You need a Costco. Everything is handed to you on a golden platter in Everything. America. Yeah. Everything is easy. And people, my dad, would say in Russian, I'm going to say in Russian, whoever your listeners, they say, you know what that means? It means, you don't know, but I'm going to explain. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you could throw in like a little word, right? Ah, this is what it means. It means people are going crazy from all the fat that they have on them, from all the like they're they're going crazy from their own fat. What does that break down to? They're so easy to get everything. DoorDash, Uber Eats. Everything is handed to you on a platter and it's fake. That's not real. That's not Amazon two hours is not this is not normal. That's yeah. instant gratification. That's that's so many things that the Torah doesn't. We don't go by that. Like, we Amazon's like same day. Target's like same day. You show up yeah. <laughs> three minutes after you put in the order. We will bring it to your car. That's yeah. uh, that's what Target was doing last. I heard it's yeah. it's yeah it's it's and it's 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 the eights of her. It's like as as Eretz Yisrael becomes you know gets more in the picture and becomes more of reality for the Jews. The Satan just keeps pumping up the value. Yeah. It's Make just it better you, and better. You, you have everything you have here, you have to work for. Yeah. You, you have to go and figure it out. You have to go and do it. And everything is Ruchni is based. Yeah. Spiritual. All spiritual. Everything. This is a very, sp and that's another thing. You, you, you won't grow anywhere like you'll grow in Eretz Israel. Absolutely. The Torah is different here. Learning is different. Wait, but the Yitzhar is different here as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Because when I got here, I couldn't learn anymore. I would sit down to learn. I couldn't. I went to. I started the. I started the the, the morning Kenyan. We were learning. I did it for like a, two weeks. I dropped out. I said, "I'm sorry, I can't do it." It's you, you have to fight for it. You have to fight, and you have to. The Yitzhar is strong. It's it is a hard place, like in the beginning, but once you get the ball rolling, it's a lot easier. But I will tell the viewers today, if they don't buy or start thinking today of Eretz Israel, if they don't put that ball in motion, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be almost impossible for them to come here. 
And when the time comes to come to Eretz Israel, we're going to have tents everywhere of people camping. The same guy that had a mansion back home is going to be sleeping in, the, in my parking lot in a tent. Why I say this? Because my family came here, my sister made Aliyah seven years ago, and they got a, Hashem, they got a beautiful home. And they, and they paid literally half of what I paid for. I paid, I bought a small three bedroom apartment on the third floor in a building. And I paid double of what they paid for for a penthouse. Yeah. That's seven. This isn't, they could have, three years ago was even good. Today I'm late to the party. My mortgage on my house is almost double than it was in America. My house is one fifth, my apartment is one fifth the size of what I lived in in America. I'm late to the party. What does that say for the people that are trying to make a lane in five years? If I'm late and I was able to, thank God I was able to buy something, what does that say for everybody who says, Bezrat Hashem will make it. When the Mashiach comes, we'll get on the plane. <laughs> when that big event takes place, something drastic is going to happen and everyone's going to be like, okay, now it's time to leave. But the problem is, it's not going to work out so good when, you know, five or six million Jews all attempt to purchase El Al tickets at the exact same time and try to sell their houses at the exact same time and try to buy an apartment in Eretz at the exact same time. Nope. Who's going to buy your stuff? <laughs> right. <laughs> Who's going to buy your things? When we were leaving Nazi Germany as a nation, when we were trying to, the people were trying to exit, nobody bought anything from the Jews. The Jews were a hated nation. We don't buy from the Jews. We don't do business with the Jews. Today, when I left America, Hutzla Aretz, the Jews bought everything from me. My house, a yid. My business, a yid. All my firearms, a yid. 10,000 rounds of ammo, yids. I didn't sell anything to a goy. Yids bought everything. And don't get me, I listed everything on Facebook, Craigslist, offer up. Yeah. Everything was listed. Nobody bought anything. Yids bought everything. So when it's time for all the yids to come, who's going to buy your stuff? Yeah. You're going to leave your house and you're just going to leave. You got to see the messages. Um, let me ask you a little more about your situation here. How is, uh, how's your wife enjoying it? Like, I mean, as, as, as a man, I'm, I'm assuming you're like, although there's probably a lot of challenges for yourself, you're probably just thriving off the spirituality. And, you, you know, I mean, we'll talk about you in a minute, but I, I want to hear, you know, a lot of time, a lot, a lot of people wonder, you know, if I move, is my wife going to be able to handle it? So, you know, as someone with some young kids who just got here not too long ago, How's, uh, how's your wife handling it? Is she happy with the decision? When you know the place you're coming from is not for you anymore, it makes your decision a lot easier. If, if in my mind, I just came from a great place, I came from America to Israel, I'm going to be miserable because I came from America to Israel. But when I came from a place that doesn't like Yids anymore and I can't be a Yid over there, Am I, I'm afraid of my children going to school and I sit there and patrol and I want and I, and I don't leave the parking lot to make sure nobody comes and shoots my kids in their school because they're Jewish when I, I was doing that that's not a place for me anymore this is the place all the little struggles it comes with that's shtiyot. that's nothing compared to what we have we're yids we're free you walk a yid you talk a yid you wear a yarmulke proud this is the place to be. That is what brings you up. Now my wife knows, and she's thankful that we're here. She says, wow, every time like a video pops up or, or she's talking to her family in America and all this anti-Semitism is coming up, she's very grateful to be here. It is hard because she had friends back home, part of the shul. It was like a big community. There's really no community here. There is, but not like in America there's community because nobody is Jewish in America. So the Jewish people that you have, you're a community. Here... You Everyone's to, Jewish, so you don't feel like anyone's unique. In one big community, but yeah. it's different, right? Yeah. But no, she's very happy here. Um, we got off the plane. It was great. My wife starts feeling sick. And she's sick for like two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And I said, hey, uh, what's going on? She goes, I'm nauseous. I want to throw up. I'm about to buy a car. And the five-seaters are a lot cheaper than the seven-seaters. I have three kids, me and my wife, it's five of us. I said, honey, before I purchase a vehicle, I'm going to purchase your pregnancy test. Because if you're pregnant and I just bought a car, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> right? That seats five people. Yeah. 
No way. So for two weeks, we argued about her being pregnant, and she's not taking a pregnancy test. You just made Aaliyah. You don't be pregnant. We're going to have a kid. Where's my doctor, right? Well, I was like, I'm not buying a car until you tell me what if this is it or not. Well, takes pregnancy says, Baruch Hashem, she's pregnant. And that is what really throws you around. Because now you're thinking, I had a doctor back home, I had a hospital, you know everything, and here it's all different. So that that stresses her out a little bit. But Baruch Hashem, there's look how many children are in Israel. Yeah. I'll tell you something interesting. Like I, I had uh, Baruch Hashem also, I had a baby here in Eretz Yisrael. I have at home a, uh, he's one and a half or something like that. And uh, <laughs> yeah. 18 months. Yeah. Women go by months. Men go by yeah, years. So go. it's just it's till he's Six two. Four months. Till he's two, he's only one years old. You yeah. know, my wife. Anyway, so and and, uh, and so when we had him, we went to the uh, to the, the I forgot the name. What are the hospital here in Yushalayim? And uh, and we were very nervous. You know, like we're used to like beautiful. Uh, we went to Mammoth Hospital, right, in New Jersey. And gorgeous. It's like a hotel over there. You get, like, a beautiful, the whole wall's a giant window. You're overlooking beautiful scenery or whatever beautiful scenery New Jersey has, parking lot. <laughs> but it's still nice. And, uh, and the service there is great. Uh, and we were very nervous here. Like, Israel, they don't really care about you and this and that. And also, when we were talking to people uh, about how, how uh, delivery works here, and they said, you know, your doctor doesn't really come. It's midwives deliver the baby. We were like, oh, a bunch of young women are going to deliver the baby. They don't know what they're doing. Um, but when all said and done, we got to the hospital. The hospital was beautiful. It was beautiful. We were waiting for my wife to go into labor. The, 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 the front of the hospital is gorgeous, just like a giant garden. We were just walking for a few hours, waiting for my wife to go into labor. And then the midwives were just the sweetest people, a bunch of Jewish young women who were just so caring and loving. And my wife and I both agreed when when all was said and done that we the the my, my is it was our fourth child Baruch Hashem, and this one was by far the best most beautiful birth out of all out of all wow, births. So so to anyone who's like you know if that's one of their concerns, I, I thought it was absolutely beautiful. And some people I spoke to said the same thing. It's it's really there's something beautiful about it here. It's it's a different experience, but it's it's much beautiful. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. Yeah. I'm excited. I just don't know what to expect, right? Yeah, the, you know, the, there's so many people are scared to come here because they're scared of every little detail. They're not sure schools and work and babies, cars, insurance, everything is so new and so overwhelming and so nerve wracking. So people just like, they'll just, they'll just turn it off. Like, I can't, like, even someone who's going to think, you know, maybe I should make Aliyah, it's the right time, I see, I can read the signs. But then as soon as they start thinking about all the, all, all the logistics, they just, they shut down and they say, you know, when, the, when the time's right. I didn't think of any of that. That's right. <laughs> yeah. of but but at, at the end of the day, everything here can be figured out. It's not that, di everything's different, but not that different. It's not a third world country. There are doctors, there's insurances, you buy a Let's talk a little bit about your business. You, you came here, you hit the ground running, which is awesome. And uh, kind, of. kind of just because you open a business doesn't mean you're making money. You know? Oh, I, I, I that's <laughs> that's up Tasha. Like, yeah. that's, just up Tasha. Out there, right? that's up Tasha. But how was that? How was how was your experience with opening up a business? Uh, just the statistic, uh, the the the, no, the logistics of just opening up a business I'm and tell you. advertising. I'm gonna tell you something really interesting. The reason Jewish people are successful in Hutzlaretz is because we're quick with the mind, all right. We know how to negotiate, and we we know what we're getting for our money. When you have everybody else, okay, with the same mentality, <laughs> it makes everything a little harder. Like in Hoots Lara, it says you could charge $50, $60, 70 for a haircut. Well, here, if you charge 70 shekels for a haircut, you're overly priced. The problem is everything's expensive. Rent is very expensive here. It's a very expensive to run a business. But at the end of the day, always at the end of the day, when you have that hard thought, you have to come to the thought again in the back of your mind, this is special land. You're on special soil. When the Mashiach comes, you're 25 minutes away from the hotel. You're where you need to be. This is a very special place. Now, business is different. Uh, I don't speak Hebrew, so... <laughs> 
How is that for you? How's how are you getting by with that? I don't need to speak really much Hebrew. How's that? Well, how's that Bet Shemesh, Baruch Hashem, is like 15 minutes away from Israel. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> Bet Shemesh. When I it's leave Bet Shemesh, I realize I'm in Israel. Yeah, and, and then I go back yeah. to Bet Shemesh and I'm like, oof. It's true. Right. It's true. Anyway, yeah. I, go, I go anywhere. You get off the you get off the highway. You drive into like Sfat or something. Get off the highway and you walk into like a gas station a store and you're like, um, yeah, how much does this cost? And they just look at you like, huh? huh? And you're like, oh, right, I forgot. Outside of Beit Shemesh, you guys don't talk English. No, <laughs> so you're coming to Beit Shemesh. We have Beit Shemesh, so there's yeah, no excuses. Oh, sure. This is, you're going to get around. You probably will never learn Hebrew, right? Yeah. It, unless you're on the on a field, like, I have to learn. So I'm starting, it's been, uh, I've been open for a couple months now. I'm getting around. Well, Hashem, Hashem sends you people. He sent me an awesome guy to come learn by me. And this guy is fluent Hebrew. And English, so he interprets everything, and he's at the same time he's learning. I'm teaching him how to cut hair, but he's helping me, and we're like, Hashem just he, he knows what he's doing. He's gonna set you up. If you put your faith in him, he's gonna set you up. None of this is my doing. I didn't do this. If I wanted to do this, I probably wouldn't do it. I didn't want to do. This. I didn't want to open a barbershop in Israel. My wife was completely against this. Like this is not. This is it's, it's Hashem. You know, Hashem wants something for you, and you 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 you're on that road, and you follow the right path, and you you do everything for the right reasons. It should be mitzliach. Yeah, that that's the thing, people. I, I think I think people need to really understand this. The, the America, and the mentality, uh, not just America, but just just the the, the modern day mentalities. It's just everything planning and preparing, and you need to know what's happening, and you need to read the fine paperwork. And, you know, people, like, they'll listen to, like, Betochen and Amuna Shirim, but, like, but, like, at the end of the day, everything is planning. But Eretz Yisrael is a place where mitzvos are real. They are actually part of your life. So, like, Amuna Betochen in Eretz Yisrael is not just a shir that you listen to for, you know, three minutes on WhatsApp. In Eretz Yisrael, it's actually the way you must live life. So, if you're going to come to Eretz Yisrael and you're going to be like, oh, it's not working. I also, I came here, I, like, on my fourth business, you know, and... It could be nerve wracking. It could be overwhelming, but it's but it's it's Hashem is putting you through uh, a, a Navy SEAL training camp of Judaism, of betachan, of serving Hashem, and and uh, and and what it, and He'll put you through through the ringer. But you have you have to realize that it's it's when you enter this land, that's it. It's 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 spirituality at its max. And if the you mute yeah. that you get in Israel, you can't get anywhere else. It's unbelievable. Because there's a lot of gush mute everywhere else. And where there's gush mute, ruch mute can't happen. One of the main reasons we picked Eretz Israel, one of my main reasons, was because you, you, could, you could protect your children here. In America, every single child has a smartphone. Every child has internet access to whatever they want. When I got off that plane in September... And I came to Bet Shemesh, and I saw boys, girls, young, old, whatever, at the sitting at the bus stop and reading a tefillin, reading some sefer, reading a gemara, learning. And then when they answer the phone, they answer a phone from two thousand and one, or nineteen ninety nine. The phones that they had, they have to open and click the buttons. They answer that phone. That's the moment I realized. This is where I'm going to protect my children. I'm going to protect my children, Eretz Israel. Yeah, I, I noticed that also when I when I that was very I, important when I moved here. Um, one of the first things also I noticed. There's a lot of first things I noticed, but all these things hit you really hard. Is that like I was walking through the street, I was walking to shul, and I noticed that people didn't look like zombies, like you know, with the phone like this the whole time, looking down. Uh, people just seem to be walking without phones, and then even in shul, like I was so used to, like I was so used to in America. Uh, during davening, ringers going off constantly, people with their towels and their tefillin, and always checking their phones, checking their phones. And uh, it's just, uh, I mean, I'm not saying every single person in Eretz Yisrael is a holy tzaddik, but in the, in the, in the religious communities here in Eretz Yisrael, it's, 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 it's much less phone usage, much, much less talking in shul, much, much less using phones in shul, and, and it just adds so much to the kedusha of the land. So just to, you know, end off the podcast, what uh, advice, what recommendations would you have to, you know, the fine Jews of Chutz Laaretz who, you know, might be on the fence thinking, you know, 
I, I, I see the sign because I, I feel like there's a lot of people now, you know, with this mindset, probably more than ever. You know, they're starting to see the the rise in anti-Semitism. They're seeing the signs, and they're feeling like I know I'm going to end up there. I know I need to get to Eretz Yisrael, but too many loose ends, business, working it out with the kids. I got older kids, younger kids, parents, this, that, all, all, all the things which are valid excuses to to work someone up. But like, you know. You 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 know you're here for a few months. You just you came here. You just did it. You jumped into what? How would you? What what advice would you give to people? I think the first step to Eretz Israel, you have to pray. That's pray really hard. This is um, you said it earlier in the podcast that it's about bitachon and emuna. Here, that's what we live off of. We live off of the emuna that when the rocket goes over your head that Iran shot a few weeks ago. It's not going to land. And Hashem shows us open miracles, right? You ha- we have to pray. Eretz Yisrael is something you pray for. It's something when it's ready for you. And the land has feelings, right? It's as, it's, this is the only land that's alive. It, it feels you. You feel it. You're connected. We have All Jews have a connection to this land. That's why we all want to come. Somehow, somewhere, we want to be here. Like you said, there's a lot of uh, logistics, businesses, families. I can't speak for everybody, right? I, my situation is a little different. But it's hard for everybody. It's really hard for us if I would have processed it. If you would have what? Processed what we were doing. Yeah. If I would have sat there and thought, what am I going to do for work? What am I going to, where are we going to live? What do, 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 do? Well, listen. I heard a saying that says, Hashem gave you a mouth, Hashem gave you teeth, He'll give you food. <laughs> right? When you realize what we're here for, we're here to honor Hashem. We're here to grow in Rukhnia. We're here to grow good children. Children that could be big, dolim, tamalechachamim, daughters that are tzedekets, that don't mind covering their bodies. Why? Because everybody else is covering their bodies. Everybody else covers their hair. Everybody else is dressed, depending on the area you live in. This is what you're here for. You're not here to grow financially. Could happen. I'm not here to make a killing a lot of money. If I wanted to make a killing, I wouldn't be here. If I wanted to swim in the dough, I'd continue living in America. You're, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna eat, you're gonna pay the bill, you're gonna be com- you're going to be more comfortable than you ever were in Kutz Laritz. Don't ask how. People don't make any money here. People live with zeros in their bank account. Everybody in the grocery stores has full carts. They're doing it. The guys are learning the kolels. They're doing it. Hashem gives. Especially here. Hashem shows us open miracles every single day. Every Israel comes with miracles. And that's what I tell the people. That's what I tell the people. All my friends back home. It's uh, as hard as with the, the, the... You just have to put your faith in Hashem. Yeah. Here, 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 Hashem just makes it much more obvious that He's providing and not your business. Exactly. Because when you make a lot of money, you're like, I got this covered. But when you make zero dollars and yet somehow you still have food on the table, which is the case for everyone in Eretz Yisrael, um, you're like, wow, Hashem is doing this. So yeah, I, I agree with you. That's I think that's that's the thing. If you if you come to the realization that you need to be in Eretz Yisrael, which I think anyone can come to that realization very quickly if they opened up. Kaheles <laughs> or any other saver, really, any saver, um, they'll come to the realization pretty quickly that Eretz Yisrael is the place to be. Uh, they should be uh, hidden the books, Emunah B'Tochen Sfarim, just pounding Emunah B'Tochen and praying to Hashem that uh, they, they should they curveball. should be chosen. They will get curveballs right before right the last conversation I had before I got on the plane Eretz Yisrael. A guy who I looked up to came up to me and he goes, two times it happened from two different people." Two people I looked up to in shul. One was a shul goer, one wasn't. And two of them said, why would you leave? The first one said, why would you leave? You made it. You made it in life. Yeah. The American mentality. You it got money, it. that means you made it. That's what life, that sentence, it, it, it means, it means that I believe life is about how much money you have in your wallet. That's it. That's life. I didn't make That's it. That's life. Yeah. <laughs> you wanted the it. The other guy I looked up to said, you know what he told me? This guy was a lot. 
wealthier than the first, the last guy, right? He told me, I thought you were going to be rich, <laughs> Brian. I really thought you'd be rich like me. He told me that. Like a few hours before I'm boarding on a plane. He goes, I really thought you were going to make it in life. So sad. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here yeah. we are. Ephraim. Baruch Hashem. Different reasons. Baruch Hashem. We've made it. Coming here to Israel, serving Hashem, that's making it. We're all on a journey, but this is definitely a big step to making it. Ephraim, thank you for uh, for joining us on this uh, Homebound Air to Israel podcast. Of course, pleasure to be here. Thanks for watching today's episode of Homebound to Air to Israel podcast. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and you value the work that we do, trying to motivate and inspire people to come back, return to our homeland, Eretz Yisrael, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to us. Uh, check out our website, homeboundisrael.com. We've got Q&As. We've got more content. We've got all kinds of great information. Share this video with family, friends, anybody in Chutz Laaretz that you want you want to help them get out, please share this video. And uh, if you are in Ramah Beit Shemesh, if you made Aliyah recently, or you're living here, or you're visiting, you're looking for probably the best haircut in town, <laughs> judging by the equipment here, uh, you should be checking out Ephraim's Barber Shop over here in the Mirkaz, in Ramah Beit Shemesh Aleph, right next to New Delhi. Is that what it's called, New Delhi? Um, so check out this place. Absolutely gorgeous. I would consider this, I guess, like a, a boutique uh, barbershop. This place is beautiful. Um, I kind of want to get a haircut just sitting in here. Um, anyway, we're going to show you. We'll give you a, a short uh, tour of this gorgeous barbershop. In slow motion, of course. Check it out. Check it out.